Hello, I'm Dr. John Cronauer, Superintendent of the Northeastern Local Schools, and want to welcome everyone to our first ever State of the Schools, where we will take a closer look at the district's educational and financial landscape. Uh, the first part of our um, State of the Schools will focus on our district goals, and then we'll move on from there to talk about district finances, and then finally, um, the awards and accomplishments of our students and staff over the course of the past year. Again, the first section is on uh, our goals, and the uh, Northeastern Local School District serves roughly 3,000 students from preschool through 12th grade at four physical schools across the district, Northridge Elementary and Middle School, Rolling Hills Elementary, Kenton Ridge High School, and the Northeastern Campus, where we are today. Our mission is to provide a safe and respectful environment that encourages all students to reach their full potential while providing a challenging curriculum that utilizes current technologies. To achieve this mission, NELSD sets goals each year for the district. Our first goal is to close the learning gaps that were created by the pandemic, which is directly tied also to goal number four, to meet state test score indicators and to strengthen our state report card rating. The district aims to improve student achievement in all areas by focusing on these two goals. While our focus on student achievement has always been one of our district goals, we really turned our attention to closing the gap uh, that was created by the pandemic and raising state test scores uh, during the 21, excuse me, 2021 school year. This means we wanna see growth in reading, writing, math, science, and social studies as we move forward. Our educators have worked hard to provide innovative instruction and support services to help our students succeed. At NELSD, we utilize the Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Fund, or ESSER funds, which our treasurer, Mr. Dale Miller, will talk about shortly. We hired several teachers to work specifically with students who are identif identified as at risk. These teachers have been providing personalized and small group instruction to our at-risk students. Through this program, we've seen progress in the performance of our at-risk students and have enjoyed watching them gain the confidence and skills necessary to succeed in their academic and personal lives. We will continue to prioritize the needs of our at-risk students and ensure that they receive the individualized attention necessary to help them reach their full potential. And the LSD is embracing technology to help students learn in new and innovative ways. As a result, technology is playing an essential role in improving student achievement from smart boards in the classrooms to online resources that students can access from anywhere on their district Chromebooks. As a district, we believe that lifelong learners are always searching for ways to improve their skills and adapt as things evolve. This is one of the reasons why access to quality professional development is critical for our teachers and staff. Continuing to instruct our staff members through professional development will keep our educators up to date on the best curricula which will in turn improve student outcomes. This is one reason why we are utilizing the professional development programs like Lexia Letters, which focuses on phonics instructions and strategies to improve reading in early learners for our K-3 teachers. This is also one of the governor's focuses in terms of the science of reading in his new budget, but we feel like we're already a step ahead with the professional development we're doing with Lexia Letters. For our teachers in grades four through 12, we are revamping our Collins writing strategies to increase, increase writing in all content areas. Writing across the curriculum has been shown as, again, a scientific strategy to help our students improve in all areas. We've also been engaged in the Ohio Department of Education's Readiness Restart Pre-Instruction Test to evaluate student knowledge and skills in various subject areas. Through this online resource, we are able to retest our students throughout the year to evaluate the growth they have made. The restart readiness assessment data is used to inform instruction, show student progress, and to help teachers and their students to identify the information they would be expected to know on the Ohio State tests. NELSD is dedicated to preparing students for success in the 21st century, and that means equipping them with the skills they need to thrive in an ever-changing world. We aim to help every student identify their strengths and interests and to create a plan that will help them achieve their goals after high school, whether that's going to college, entering the workforce, or pursuing a trade. We want our students to have every path to success. Next up is our third goal, to cultivate and strengthen relationship with district stakeholders and staff. To achieve this goal, we 
created a key communicators committee made up of teachers, parents, students, and community members during the 21-22 school year. We've continued holding quarterly meetings with this committee during this school year. We value the time these individuals have spent with our communications representative and myself and appreciate the feedback they regularly provide us. You may notice the redesign of our district logo on the shirt um, and our newly designed website. As we transition into our new school buildings, our previous logo needed some refresh. We wanted something that honored our old logo but fit with the direction we are headed. So we, since we are consolidating the two pre-K 12 through the two pre-K through 12 campuses, Northridge and Kenton Ridge, it made sense to drop the elementary school names of South Vienna, Northridge, and Rolling Hills and highlight the Northeastern and Kenton Ridge campuses in our new logo. We also wanted to show that while we may be two schools, we are still one district with one mission to provide the opportunity for students to succeed by offering a safe and respectful environment, continuous staff development, a challenging curriculum, and current technology, supported by our parents and community. This is why you will see the two rings interlocked together and encompassed with the gold oval around it. When planning for our new website, we wanted to create a digital front porch for our district that would engage our community through organized and enhanced digital communication making it user-friendly and a hub for everyone in our community, no matter the platform they are using. I learned a lot about what goes into redesigning a website, and I'm very glad that Mrs. Stratton was the one who did that for us instead of me. I can assure you this is no small task. We worked with many stakeholders to determine the most used elements of our previous website and got input on which designs would best fit our district. Next, we weeded through the content on our old site to determine what was still relevant and what needed to be completely re-imaged. In the end, we landed on a design that was clean and allows us to highlight our students in a hero gallery at the end of each homepage and also showcase quick link buttons to access frequently used information such as checking student grades, paying school fees, lunch menus, and our staff directory. At the bottom of each homepage is a section for news and calendars while our new website continues to evolve and some pages are still being built, we hope our families and stakeholders will find it useful for the needs that they have to visit our website. In addition to these changes, to help us better understand what is working and where we can continue to improve as a district, we are working with Fallon Research and Communications on a new scientific community survey that will launch on Monday, April 17th. This survey will be via phone and text messages to the community members throughout our school district. If you receive a call or a text regarding the NALSD survey, please take a few minutes to speak with them to share your feedback about how we're doing and where we might improve. Our last goal is to advise the community on the progress of buildings and facilities and the projects that we have for our new pre-K-12 campus. We have produced multiple video updates for this goal from longer than 10 minute videos to short weekly and bi-weekly videos of about two to three minutes with snippets of the progress in the buildings. We have continued working with the Springfield News Sun to provide updates to our community and the greater Springfield area and we will continue to do so. Section two of our um, State of the Schools address will be the goal two on ESSA reporting and district finances and to go over our second goal transparent reporting of how our ESSER funds have been spent and the state of our district finances, I would like to bring in our phenomenal treasurer, Mr. Dale Miller. Dale. Thank you, Dr. Cronauer. Now we're gonna take a look at the Northeastern Local School District's long and short-term financials. And looking at this, first and foremost, we wanna thank our taxpayers for their support. Each May, in November, we are required by law to prepare a five-year forecast. Within that five-year forecast is an annual preparation budget. We break that annual preparation budget down to a monthly revenue and expense report. Within that is your fund balance, which is important for cash flow purposes. This is your reserves to maintain operations and work through difficult periods. When looking at this graph, we want to most show the importance of the five-year forecast, which is the blue line. This is the revenues and expenses 
for FY23 broken down into monthly estimates. The green line is the actuals. As it occurs, we post it and report it at the end of each month. On this graph is two other lines, which is the gray and the orange. They are two years of history, 21 and 22. They're there for comparison purposes to look at cash flow and to review expenses and revenues to see if anything is out of line. We break the revenues down into these categories. Notice that the local is 60% and the state is 40%. Real estate taxes are 37%. Now an important piece to this is your income tax, which is 18% of our general fund operating revenues. And is very important and will need to be renewed in November 2024. It is very important, 18% of our revenues are generated from this income tax. The other side of this is the state foundation, which is about 36%. That is about 12 to $13 million. What surprises me with the, for the taxpayers of this district, in 2010, that was between 12 and $13 million. It has remained consistent over a 13 year period. That goes to show you how important this income tax levy is. When we do prepare this five-year forecast, we take it and look at three years of actual plus five years of estimates. The blue line is the revenues. Notice how flat they are here in the coming years. And the decrease is your income tax, if not renewed. We'll reflect again that on the revenue side when we look at the fund balance. The blue line shows how flat our revenues have been and continue to be. The red line is your expenses. As you can expect, inflation increases those expenses. The green line is the important fund balance. This is the reserves that enable us to weather storms and work through cash flow shortages and work to maintain services at the level we have. You'll notice that this is above is a surplus throughout the forecast period of 2027. The other thing I'd like to point out is you'll notice the yellow line at the bottom of that off to the two years. That would be what our fund balance would be if the levy would not pass. Um, as always, if you ever have any questions, please do, not, please do not hesitate to contact us at the Northeastern Local School District Treasurer's Office and we'll be glad to answer questions. With that, that is our current and long-term finances. We also wanted to touch upon our ESSER funds. We have one ESSER fund left, ESSER 3. This was the large final ESSER amount received. It was passed in August of 21 to be spent from August of 21 through to September of 24. The Northeastern Local School District was allocated $2.2 million. The Board of Education Administration committed 100% of these funds to be used for closing the learning gap from the COVID loss of educational opportunity for their children with additional teachers and enhanced summer school for 22 and 23. We will evaluate each program for 2024. A breakdown of how this money has been and will be spent, we needed $286,000 in 22 to in 23, we will spend about $745,000, and we're projecting in FY24 about $1.2 million for the total of $2.2 million of total expenses of these ESSER funds. The district is extremely proud of the fact that we committed 100% of these dollars to instructional expenditures. Again, this money will be spent by September of 2024. Thank you very much. Very informative, Mr. Miller. Thank you very much uh, for that presentation. Do want to let everyone know that uh, both of these presentations will be up on our website so you can actually see the uh, PowerPoint as well as the uh, uh, oral presentation uh, on our website. So uh, they will both be there. 
We touched briefly on our building projects when we went over our 22-23 district goals. Uh, we'd like to spend a little bit more time in depth on those building projects uh, to share a few more facts with you. On August 20th, 2022, we held our building dedication and ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Northeastern Pre-K-12 campus. It was an exciting day that showed us just how quickly and adaptable uh, we have to be because it started raining as we were beginning uh, our presentation outside. We moved everything inside very quickly into the gym uh, and we truly enjoyed getting to introduce the new building to our community and to celebrate together. As to be expected, there have been some things that have cropped up uh, as we work through um, things here in the new building. Uh, we continue to work with our construction manager, Shook Touchstone, to address those needs and ensure that we uh, don't run into the same things at the Kenton Ridge campus. Overall, the students and staff have been very pleased with the bright, new, and welcoming building here at Northeastern. Our Kenton Ridge Pre-K-12 building is moving along nicely. Over the past 20 months or so, we have watched from the foundation getting poured, the structural beams and walls going up, the floors getting installed, and now we're seeing cabinets and furniture going into the new building. In February and March, we facilitated tours for our staff on the KR side of the district. They enjoyed getting to see the new building, and it was fun to watch the ex excitement grow for what they know is coming for the 23-24 school year. On Tuesday, May 9th, from 5 until 7 p.m., we would like to invite the community to come take a walk down memory lane for our one last look open house at Kenton Ridge, North Ridge, and Rolling Hills. Again, we're still going to be in school, but we definitely want to invite the community in for the, that, again, trip down memory lane. Then, on Saturday, August 19th, 2023, we will host our Kenton Ridge Pre-K-12 Campus Building Dedication and Ribbon Cutting Ceremony from 2 to 4 for the community to come and join us in celebrating the opening of the new school. Community members will have the opportunity to walk around and tour the new building and connect with our staff members. In addition to our new buildings, we have a few special projects we're working on to close out the bond issue. The first is that we're trying to get track, a new track done at Kenton Ridge and resurfacing at the, new, at the northeastern track. The current bid on that is about 1.4, 1.5 million. Um, we are still working on that and, and looking for uh, two more bids to come in. We have contracted with Dant Clayton for new bleachers and a press box at Kenton Ridge for a total of just about $780,000, and that should be up and running here for the beginning of the fall season. A support building will be going up at the new Northeastern Complex. We don't have the plans and everything done for that, but we're anticipating an estimate of around a million dollars for that building. We're hoping to keep it right at that number. Lighting for both Kenton Ridge and Northeastern stadiums in the neighborhood of about $600,000. Shelter houses for each of our building uh, campus complexes. Uh, we're going to partner with the CTC to build those, uh, state, uh, those shelter houses, and we anticipate that that project will be in the neighborhood of about $100,000. Additional playground equipment will be going in at both buildings. Uh, that will be funded uh, at the 40% rate by the OFCC, or the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to getting all of that equipment in over the course of the next few months. Renovations for a board office space. We're actually looking at the house uh, that we purchased on Beaux-Arts Road, uh, and we're looking at doing renovations in the neighborhood of about $200,000 on that complex. Fencing at both Northeastern and Kenton Ridge uh, for the outer uh, part of the stadium for football and soccer, um, that price has come in at about $102,000. Funding for these special projects will come from our unused local funded initiative dollars of the bond issue. And we are also expecting to have about $2 million come back to us from the unspent portion of the dollars used to build the two pre-K-12 campuses. Additionally, we're gonna have about $3.7 million in interest money from the building funds that were generated by the bond issue dollars. We anticipate having um, all of those dollars in hand at the end of the project, which is when we can use all of those funds to be able to take care of all of the special funds and projects that we were just talking about. And that could take us up to about 12 to 24 months to get all of that done. Turf fields have been talked about. Uh, they were in a bid that we had initially. Um, we have pulled those off 
for the moment. We are still hoping that we're going to have the funds to be able to do turf fields in the future. Um, but right now, we're focusing on our track projects and the other things that I mentioned uh, just a moment ago. Moving on to our student and staff achievements, uh, we are proud to recognize the outstanding accomplishments of our students and staff in academics, sports, and community involvement. Through their hard work and dedication, our students have excelled in their respective fields and are a testament to the quality of education and community support at NELSD. Join us as we celebrate the achievement of our students and showcase the impact they are making in our community and beyond. We are so proud of the work ethic and grit of NEHS senior Samantha Higston, better known as Sammy. This fall, Sammy became the first ever female in Clark County, Ohio to earn an Eagle Scout ranking. In addition to the hard work Sammy put in to reach this achievement, she is also taking a full course load of College Credit Plus courses at Clark State while also working 30 hours per week. Congratulations to Coach Jake Buckholtz and our Jet football team on one of their best seasons in 30 years as they went undefeated in the regular season. And for the first time since 1992, um, they reached the uh, playoffs and actually had a home playoff game victory, uh, the first ever home or the first ever victory of a playoff game for the Jets. Coach Buckholtz was also named the OHSAA and the OPSWA Division V Coach of the Year. Congratulations to Coach Buckholtz and the Jets. We would like to recognize KRHS senior Rebecca Lopez for her vocal prowess. After a rigorous, rigorous audition process, Rebecca earned the prestigious honor of joining 311 talented singers from high schools across the United States in the National SSAA High School Honor Choir at the American Choral Directors Association's National Conference. The choir rehearsed for four days, culminating in a performance at the Cincinnati Music Hall for their families and thousands of choral music educators worldwide. KRHS senior, excuse me, KRHS junior Lindy, Lindy Thomas also received recognition for her vocal talents when she was selected to join the Ohio High School All-State Choir at the Ohio Music Educators Association's annual state conference. Lindy joined 180 top high school singers from across Ohio in a concert for their families and hundreds of music educators around the state. We would like to recognize the achievements of Northeastern Choir Singers. Our Northeastern High School Choir received a superior rating at the Kings Island Music in the Parks Festival. The choir had six singers perform solos at OMEA and Ensemble Contest. All six, all six earned ratings of a one or two, which are the highest possible ratings, two um, receiving superior ratings, and four receiving excellent ratings. The Kenton Ridge Cannibal Choir and the Northeastern Select Choir performed the national anthem at the University of Dayton Arena for the OHSAA State Women's Basketball Championship Games this spring. We would also like to recognize KRHS senior Kylie Ropp on, and Jackson Skiles. Kylie and Jackson brought home a silver medal in the Ohio Family Career and Community Leaders of America FCCLA Regional Competition for fashion construction and interior design, respectively. They will go on to compete at the Ohio o the Ohio FCCLA competition later this April. Congratulations to Northeastern and Springfield Clark CTC students Carolyn Harrington and Trinity Ridgeway, who competed and won bronze at the Leadership and Skills Conference USA Skills competition over the summer. This is the first ever national medal in this competition for the Springfield Clark CTC, and we are proud of these young ladies for their hard work that they put into preparing for the Health Knowledge Bowl. Northeastern senior Taylor Maxwell, Graphic Arts, and the senior class of 2023 also attended the State of Ohio Skills USA officer as an officer. In addition, Trinity and KRHS senior Skyler Sullivan uh, had commanding performances in the Skills USA regional competition this past February. Skyler took first place in the nurse assisting competition. Trinity took second place in the medical terminology competition. Congratulations, Trinity, Carolyn, Taya, and Skyler. Our Kenton Ridge varsity volleyball team had a strong season, grabbing the title of CBC Conference Kenton Trail Division champs as they topped Jonathan Alder. Uh, they beat the Pioneers in, I believe, their final game of the season uh, to win the conference championship. In addition to earning a gold rating on its national chapter application for the fifth time in the last six years, 
Our Northeastern FFA chapter raised over $20,000 at this year's Pink Powder Puff game and festivities, bringing their 10-year total to $106,000 raised for the Clark Champaign County Breast Cancer Endowment Fund. Great job to our Northeastern FFA. How about our Cougar swimmers? Our KRHS swim had a stellar season with strong finish at the state meet. Senior Evan Blazer grabbed a, st a state title in the 50 freestyle and hit an All-American cut. He also captured second, just barely being out-touched for first place in the 100 freestyle and set new school records in both the 100 and 50 free. He also brought home two first place finishes in the 50 free and 100 freestyle and set a new Southwest District record in the 100 freestyle at the Southwest District Swim Meet at Miami. Senior Chase Fife was named the CBC Swimmer of the Year. Chase took fourth place in the 100 Butterfly and 13th in the 100 Freestyle at the state meet. He also had a big day at the Southwest District meet with a third place finish in the 100 Backstroke and fourth place finish in the 100 Butterfly. Our girls swim team brought home the title of CBC Kenton Trail Girls Swimming Champions and senior Riley Brown was named the CBC Swimmer of the Year. At the state swim meet, sophomore Jaylee Brown finished 26th in the 50 freestyle and the girls 200 free relay team of Jaylee Brown, Riley Brown, Brooke DeHart, and Alyssa Schaefer finished 18th and set a new school record. Our NEHS competition cheer team uh, is letting loose around the Ohio and uh, the nation for uh, their cheering prowess. Uh, the team earned the title of Division IV Best in the State Champs. The Jets squad competed at the 2023 UCA National High School Cheerleading Competition in the Varsity Non-Building Game Day Division and the Small Varsity Non-Building Division and earned sixth in the nation in the Small Varsity Non-Building Division. Congratulations, girls. We would also like to recognize the KRHS powerlifting team for a strong performance at the state meet. Senior Sophia Miller earned second place in the girls 125 pound weight class. Senior Kusha Patel earned eighth place in the girls 115 pound class. And sophomore Michaela Collier earned fifth place. And freshman Kingsley Nichols earned seventh place in the girls 155 pound division. Senior Journey Armstrong took eighth in the girls 175 pound class. Junior Callie Chevret captured seventh in the girls 195 pound class and sophomore Liv McKinnon earned fourth place in the 225 pound class. Freshman Michaela Anderkin captured fourth place and senior Braylon Fox came in fifth and sophomore Katina Lopez placed eighth in the state, excuse me, placed eighth in their divisions. For the boys team, junior Luke Brown placed 11th in the 135 pound class. Freshman Aiden Pennington placed 10th at 155. Sophomore Keegan May placed 8th in the 185-pound class, and senior Alex Parson earned 11th in the 210-pound uh, division. Sophomore Levi, Ham Levi Hambrink won 11th in the 250-pound weight class. Our NEHF powerlifting team also had a strong performance at the state meet, with sophomore McKinlan Mitchell placing 3rd in the girls' 155-pound and highest overall deadlift in the 155-pound class. Sophomore Kylie Montgomery earning fourth in the Girls Unlimited, and junior Gabe Miller grabbing a sixth place finish in the Boys Unlimited. The Northeastern Drama Club put on its first play in the new building with a Christmas Carol and its first musical in the new, new building. That would be the SpongeBob musical. Both shows were quite a success. Congratulations to our Northridge 7th and 8th grade Power of the Pen teams for their outstanding performance at the regional tournament. Our talented riders of Carmen, Layla, Katie, Oliver, Reed, and Kyla did an amazing job and had a blast competing at Wittenberg. Layla earned ninth place overall in, for seventh grade out of approximately seventh, 75 riders, earning the team a spot at the state tournament in May. An EHS senior Grant Goodfellow represented Northeastern High School at the Springfield Exchange Club Youth of the Month as the Springfield Youth Club Youth of the Month in the month of January. That's a tongue twister right there. Kudos to the students demonstrating exceptional commitment to, in their fields. We are proud of them and all of our Cougars and Jets who exemplify the roar and soar attributes that we practice daily here in our schools. Well, that's a wrap on our first State of the Schools presentation. 
I appreciate your time uh, to watch this presentation. If you ever have questions, please feel free to reach out uh, to me at the board office at 937-325-7615. That's 937-325-7615. Or email at johncronauer at nelsd.org. That's J-O-H-N-K-R-O-N-O-U-R at nelsd.org. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the first State of the Schools address, and we'll be back again next year.